Okay, today we'll talk about sea ice. Last time we talked about land ice and how land ice is just the product of compressed snow that falls over thousands of years. Sea ice is kind of the opposite of that. Um, so if you imagine you have your ocean, and initially this is open ocean with the sun shining and temperatures above freezing. But then imagine we're in the Arctic and the sun goes down and it is replaced with the moon and it is the polar night and it's really cold. Then temperatures drop below freezing at the surface of the water and little crystals of ice start to form eventually when the water drops down to a freezing point. And the freezing point for salt water is about minus 1.8 degrees Celsius. So because there's salt in the ocean, freezing point is slightly depressed. So I said that sea ice is kind of the opposite to land ice, and that's because land ice is growing through snowflakes falling and growing on the top, whereas sea ice grows from beneath. You start freezing water in little crystals from underneath to the base of the ice over time. And initially this might look like a very thin layer of very dark ice because it's kind of transparent still. And this only happens if you have very quiet conditions because then you grow this black ice because then you don't have winds or currents that would break up the new ice that forms. So you need very quiet conditions and this is this black ice that's also sometimes called nylas. It can be almost invisible or make the surface of the ocean look kind of glassy or almost greasy. Now if you add some wind to the surface here, then the ice gets broken up and shuffled around and instead of a very thin layer of uniform ice, you get little chunks of ice that start to grow and that are being pushed around by the winds and currents and they bump into each other and as a result they tend to build up little borders, elevated borders. And because they're moved around rather randomly, they tend to form these circular disks, approximately circular disks, elevated edges. And this type of ice we call pancake ice. And the diameter of these pancakes is on the order of half a meter to five or ten meters. The transition phase between the first young nylas and the pancake ice, when things are already kind of broken up, is typically called grease ice. Now as temperatures keep dropping and the ice keeps growing together, the pancakes are starting to grow larger and larger and eventually don't really look like pancakes anymore. Waves are dampened out and the wind effects are also suppressed. So you're starting to have these large flows of ice that then begin to be less circular, less regular. Sometimes you still see the elevated borders at the end, at the edges. And so we call these ice flows, and you would refer to such a situation as loose pack ice. And then eventually you get into a region where you just have really large ice flows forming almost a continuous thin sheet of ice floating on the ocean of the order of tens of kilometers. And this is what you would call the pack ice. They can still break up. Sometimes you may have divergent winds 
So imagine a region where the wind here blows in this direction and the wind here blows in that direction and then you open up a crack, you break the ice apart and pull it apart and you're exposing the dark waters underneath. So if you have divergent winds then you can create these cracks and these cracks are called leads. This is a lead. And you can even have these like near the pole, near the North Pole or in very dense regions of ice where it initially looks like you have a complete ice covered area. But there's always the ocean just a few feet underneath. And finally, if you do have divergent ice motion like that, then you somewhere else might have a convergent motion, meaning that this one flow here might ram into this other flow. So if you have convergent conditions, convergent drift, then the ice can actually break up and form structures that are so-called pressure ridges. Yeah? The pressure builds up and breaks the ice into these blocks. The blocks by the convergent conditions get piled on top of each other and depending on the shape of the original sea ice flows these blocks are often arranged in sort of sinuous snake-like patterns and they always appear at the intersection of two previous flows that have been crushed together by wind and current forces. So this would be one ice flow here on one side and another one on the other side originally and the conversion conditions between those create these pressure ridges one of which I've tried to illustrate here. So this is a so-called pressure ridge and these can be up to 60 meters or so deep, whereas thermodynamically grown ice, the thickness of thermodynamically grown sea ice, is typically less than 3 meters. And that is because the thicker the ice, the harder it becomes to grow more, because it isolates the ocean from the really cold temperatures in the atmosphere. So the thickness here is typically less than three to four meters. And for ice that's just one year old, it's typically one to two meters. And the final thing to mention is that these small ice types, nihilus, grease ice, pancake ice, smaller ice flows and loose pack ice that I'm giving these asterisks are typically in the marginal ice zone. So in the boundary zone between the pack ice and the open ocean. And this marginal ice zone can extend from one to seven, several hundred kilometers.